You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A-List Online. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith and the interview subject coming up is Chris Buroff from the Outfit Sun Salute. Now the reason for the conversation is to promote the two singles and the upcoming album that the band has coming out sometime this year. The two singles are called No More and Hold On and they're out there for you to stream and listen to via the usual services. Chris talks about that toward the end of the episode. So without further delay, here he is, Chris from the Outfit, Sun Salute. Chris, Andy McKay-Smith calling for our chat. How are you going? Good, mate. How are you? Mate, plugging away. Yeah, just had a chat to Andrew over there in uh, Perth, or Fremantle, it should be specific, from Yo-Yo Sun. So I've got I've had one before you and I've got two after you. So there you go. Not a bad night for interviews, I must say. Yeah, brilliant. You know, what's been happening, mate? You've you got the day job going on today and you've come home recently, that sort of thing? Yeah, I do a bit of a day job um, down here in Melbourne. Yeah, just a bit of um, outdoor kind of gardening work. Oh, yeah. I do a lot of uh, gigs on the weekend as well, just kind of solo ones, um, pop gigs and that kind of thing. So covers work, is that what you're doing? Yeah, pretty much. Good man. Most weekend. Yeah, Yeah. I used to do that. I used to do a lot of that. I've sort of stepped out of it a bit because I was getting burnt out, but uh, I used to play bass, or I still do play bass in a a, a three- and four-piece band playing rock covers, funk covers, disco covers. But then yeah. doing the solo, not the solo, I, I never, not a great singer to be honest with you, so I used to play acoustic guitar with a singer. We used to sit in a chair and yeah, right. bash away and do our thing. Yeah, nice. Very noble work in my view. It is. It's good fun. It's nice. Yeah. It's hard It's hard work, but it's, uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah. I thought I read yeah. somewhere that you guys were from Airlie Beach. So you're down yeah, there. Yeah, we Melbourne. are. Well, yeah, I, I live in Melbourne now. Yeah, we um, we pretty much spread out from Airlie Beach. We... We all lived up there for about three and a half years. We were all up there together, which is really when the band, um, you know, really kind of got its solid roots with each other. Um, you know, we were kind of playing together all the time in little kind of duos and trios, um, as well as playing as a, you know, sort of seven and eight piece. Um, but yeah, we've kind of, everyone's kind of gradually moved away. Uh, a couple of the guys live down on the Sunshine Coast. Um, nice. Yep. I'm, I'm down here in Melbourne. Um and then, yeah, I've got another one in Byron Bay. Um, and then there's still a couple up in Eddie Beach. Holy shit, how do you guys get together then to rehearse well, and do it, what you need to do? It, well, it works really well because we, we kind of tour. Um, we tour, do kind of main tours like two to three times a year kind of across the across the coast. And we have like um, rehearsal periods prior to those, you know, kind of um, just to get the set kind of happening and like get, get that kind of going again. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're doing like right, we're doing kind of writing and jamming sessions a couple of times throughout the year to get a bit of fresh material and make sure, sure. Our, our live show is really kind of fluent and stuff. Um, and then um, and then apart from that as well, we get we, you know because being when, with being in Eddie Beach for so long, there's a lot of kind of corporate um, and wedding kind of work That's up there right. as well for yeah, spot on for large for large bands. You know, we're in, in that area, there's not that many options to go for kind of you know, sort of six, seven piece bands if you're if you're looking for that sort of thing. So we get a lot of work doing those as well. So combinate and, and, and they obviously pay for our flights Travel, to go up there yeah. and, and play with each other. Yeah. So a you know, combination of the tours, um, you know, the, the, the kind of writing sessions and then it's just these odd gigs, you know, it keeps us keeps us going to get you know, it just feels like it's always constant there's always something coming up. I bet um, it does, yeah. Yeah. That's In the right. next kind of, you know Yeah, it's good. It's a good so- good system. It's taken so, a while to get in place, but it works just about. <laughs> good on you, and good on you for making it work. Yeah. There's obviously a lot of enthusiasm, and you guys are uh, mates, and that's really important. My God, how many bands have I been in that have broken up because we basically don't like each other eventually by the end of the tenure of the <laughs> band? But how, do, how do you guys – is that why it works, because you guys are scattered to the four corners of Australia? Or, yeah. Or... <laughs> yeah. 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 We're not doing it. <laughs> You're not in no, each other's I mean, face. You know, you know? We are we – are, we are... <clears throat> that is something that's really great about this band. I, I've been in quite a lot of bands in my time. So, so have the other boys, you know, and I think that we all agree on, you know, not, not to say this isn't the case before, but this, this band particularly, we are all really close mates. You know, we're, we're a kind of similar age in the kind of, uh, I'm, I'm the youngest actually, I think I, I just turned, uh, I just turned 30 the other day. So, you know, we're, we're all kind cool. of around that kind of age, yep. um, age, age mark. Um, you know, the, it, it's this, it's the same as any band, you know, we, you know, the, it's a testing thing to do and we're on the road a lot and there's a lot of kind of creative, you know, decision making and emotional input everywhere, you know, so you, you know, people, you know, can, can 
have difference of opinions and that kind of happens in every band but we we kind of tend to always have if you know if there are any kind of you know different disagreements or anything we always you know have a way of resol- resolving it we all understand that it's you know strictly kind of professional we're all still mates at the end of and end of the day whatever happens which is really really good and that does is is what keeps you know keeps it together when we are in different parts of the country quite well but how do you keep yeah. it civil okay because i'm a musician played bass in many bands, believe me, and I really love working with the guys that I work with at the moment in Velvet Kiss. They're, they're just wonderful people, but it has yeah, barely yeah. been like that up to this point, let me tell you. And so I've probably been in seven or eight bands that have gig regularly, that sort of thing. I, I've, yeah, I've, yeah. I've had to kick a guy out of a band for beating up his wife. I've had to wow, awesome. tell, cool. yeah, tell a girl that she probably, well, I didn't tell her this specifically, but she was pregnant and her boyfriend was taking methamphetamines and she was drinking at gigs and I was really uncomfortable in that environment, so I had to let her go. You know, I mean, look, you know what I'm saying. My point is, is that there are so many things that can go wrong in bands, but you guys Absolutely. have found each other. Yeah. You guys have found each other. Well, and how did, how, yeah. yeah. I, I, remember, I remember thinking that when I first joined the band. I joined the band about five years ago. I was, I was, I was, um, I was living in Melbourne when I first... I'm, I'm from the UK originally. Yep. Um... And uh, I was travelling up up north, and um, you know, heard heard some through some friends. These guys needed a, a trumpet player, um, you know, because I play trumpet and guitar in, in this band at the moment. Um, but, yeah, they, they yeah. were, yeah, yeah. And um, and I, I ended up. I remember when I first met them. I just uh, that was one of the first things I thought. I thought these guys, they all get on really well, like mates. There's, you know, it's you know, out of all the bands I've been in. Um, it felt like this one had the least chances of uh, breaking up, if that makes sense. That kind of, <laughs> it does. You know, it makes complete Jimian sense in. as a musician, believe me. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that kind of get you know drew me in quite a lot to the boys, yeah. So, so you got these two singles out. These are the two singles that Leah sent across to me. The first one was back in March. It's called No More. And the one recently, yep. last month, is called Hold On. So I'm yep, going to share my thoughts right. with you on both of them. So No okay. More... What I felt about that single there was it had more of a contemporary feel a la Maya Hawthorne. So I hope you've heard of him because I'm a big fan of Maya Hawthorne's work. And that was a cut that felt very close to what he'd been doing recently. And it's got that it's got that traditional Motown feel to it, but at the same time it's very contemporary at the same time. So that's that's what I felt about that one there. And hold on, wow, okay, so when I read the bands that you're influenced by and I saw Catch a Fire, yeah, I got it big time. Dub and reggae, and you've really leaned into it there. But both songs have a very good pop angle to them as well. So they're very listenable. They're not one of those songs that you couldn't put on around people who don't have an appreciation for the Jackson 5 or Sly and the Family Stone or Bob Marley or any of the greats from dub and reggae, dub and reggae such as Ali Anderson. You can put these songs on around anybody and I feel they're going to work. You know, that is an entity, like music is entertainment, right? And this is what your music is. This is why I feel it's being produced for this reason. Of course, you guys have got, you know, you've got your own expression and creativity to follow, but this is music that really feels really entertaining. So it does not surprise me in the least, going back to what you said at the beginning of the conversation, that you get opportunities to perform in corporate gigs and that sort of thing with this music. Yeah, uh, and, and uh, yeah, that, that's something uh, that I notice a lot of our gigs is we do have a really wide uh, kind of demographic. You know, um, hmm. if we, if we can play a kind of family event, and there'll be you know little kids. Exactly, getting involved I'm, I'm in getting that vibe. I've got know, kids, so that's what I what yeah. I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we also you know playing playing in cities. You know, it's a bit more of a kind of city vibe, or like you know, we've gone and played at wineries and all sorts. You know, to people of all ages, and generally quite rece- well received um, wherever we go. You know, we found ourselves. When we were kind of doing the, um, you know, a lot of touring in Queensland, um, you know, it's a ma- the, the the main kind of music you'll find at those kind of festivals. You know, it's a lot of blues and country music, you know, which is which is great. So we're quite. <laughs> You're not we, wrong. We find ourselves, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We find ourselves as as the anomaly band. You know, the kind of, um, you know, the kind of slightly different one in a lot of cases, but we're always really well received by those audiences, those kind of country and blues. Mm. audiences you know so yeah we really appreciate it of, of everyone that, that comes along and enjoys it mm. yeah. the other thing i really liked was the uh or is the artwork to hold on now it's uh it looks like a really good photoshop i'm learning how to use photoshop at the moment so it looks like it's it's really a professional use of photoshop there so obviously it's it's hold on to the earth and these sort of things but can, can you give a bit more insight into the album or the single artwork yeah that one um we had a few different um, sort of uh, ideas, ideas for that one, but I think that that 
it basically it just really represents the the meaning of the song really well you know it's quite um uh, you know, the the song itself is about looking after the, the environment and the world we live in. You know, it's a kind of call out to, to Mother Earth, hold on, you know, there's still hope. Because um, the way, you know, the way we feel things are going, it could be changed, you know, the way, um, the way that people are kind of treating the the uh, the nature and, you know, the environment and stuff. Yeah, uh, so it's just a really good representation of it. And we, you know, we're, there's a lot of... Um, the guys, uh, in the, you know, the, the guys, Tane uh, Takarangi, uh, the front man, and uh, Jarika, the drummer, the um, the founders of the band, the original two-piece, um, mm-hmm. you know, they're quite into their kind of astronomy and um, a lot of stuff like that. So I think it kind of represents a lot of where the music has come from for them. And that's cool. kind of a clear message as to what that particular sound is about. So, yeah, we kind of came to this decision with that. Gotcha, yeah. and and I take it the 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 lyrics. I'll also, also give the sorry. credit. Sorry, I just while you're talking about the artwork, give the yeah. credit a bit of credit as well to our our new sax player uh, Chelsea from Band Sky, who's helped us out a lot with the uh, upcoming artwork for for the the singles and the um the new album. So thanks, Chelsea. For that. Yeah, they look really cool. The other, I'm big on on bands producing merch for fans because obviously it's a, it's a great source of revenue for musicians. But I think it's really cool yeah. to have a strong merch game. And this stuff here would look really good on the flag. You know, the silk flags that a lot of the metal bands do. Yeah, it'd look wicked, man. Great I'd idea, love, love yeah. one of them yeah. myself. You know. Yeah, we're doing a new banner, so maybe we'll uh, we'll look into that. To get it. That's a great idea. <laughs> we're um, <clears throat> yeah, we've got quite a bit of merch there, and we're looking on expanding. We've got some really um, really nice kind of flat caps with our logo on it. Pretty cool. Um, Sweet. Yeah, we've got all, all sorts of things really, but yeah, we can into that stuff as well. Yeah. Do you sell a lot of that stuff online, or is it mainly at gigs that you you sell most of it? We do sell stuff online. Um, we've got a, we've got a merch page on our website. Um, we sell the majority at gigs. That's just the best way um, to sell it. You know, when people are there, it's kind of a real nice kind of souvenir from the evening and stuff like that. Um, but we, you know, we do generate um, sales from. On, on online stuff where people have seen it and they want to you know pick it up later or something like that. But yeah, we've got a pretty good online store going on the website there. If anyone's keen to check it out, get involved. Definitely out. encourage that, especially <laughs> with the caps. I think it's really important that if you're a fan of music, you support the artist because it's not like you've got a label behind you. Of course, you've got the distro here through Firestarter and that's the opportunity for you and I to have a conversation. But really, the only way you're going to make money with the greatest of respect to the commercial side of music is really through selling merchandise. You know, and- yeah, um, yeah, I agree with you there. Um, I mean, we're you know we're a seven piece band on the <clears throat> on the road. You know, it's it's money's always tight. Um, you know, we 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 you know we try our best to kind of get our costs covered and and uh, you know help pay our musicians. But it's tough. You know, every musician knows that. And um, yeah, kind of merch sales uh, really can help with that. You know, a lot of the time, um, and we're we're really kind of trying to trying to really focus on that and this next couple of years get that going a bit more kind of income so we can keep comfortably doing what we're doing mm-hmm. indeed yeah, yeah. So, uh, i'm going to ask you a bit of a different sort of question i don't ask this too often but what do you hope to yeah, achieve yeah. with your music i mean you're obviously very creative types you all get along but and i'm not i'm not asking how far you can take it in terms of fame and fortune and all that sort of things but sure. what sort of an audience do you want to reach with it we're um <clears throat> we've got quite a specific kind of um, you know, we, we we've got a real conscious message that we want to kind of bring to to the world. You know, it's a it's a kind of it's a it's a message of like strong family morals and kind of looking after Mother Nature and the world the, earth, the world that we live Beautiful. in, yeah. um, and recognizing you know um, indigenous cultures. Um, you know, um, and that that's those those kind of beliefs. So again, I'll, I'll bring it back to the kind of the two guys who founded the band, uh, Jarek Earth and Tane Tokaragi. They've got very, you know, very strong messages like that. They want to put forward, and a lot of the the kind of um, <clears throat> bigger festivals and stuff that we we play, we really like to put our message across mm-hmm. in that way. And it, um, yeah, it's, it's it's that's essentially what we want to do. They want to take that message as far as we possibly can. You know, um, if we get to take it <clears throat> international one day, that would be that'd be amazing. But oh, so cool. far, we're we're, we're just trying our best to get it all around Australia at the moment. So, do you find that message? Are we getting there? Sorry, you go. So yeah, no, and then we're going to uh, yeah. So um, we're, we're kind of building up um, our kind of circuit mainly around Australia at the moment, and we're we're just pushing that that message you know further and further. We're we're kind of like uh, every tour we we do, we're kind of expanding the area that we that we cover. So we're we're getting there. <laughs> I like to think. Good on you. Yeah. Look, it's a work yeah. in progress, really, isn't it, on that front? 
you know, you've, absolutely, yeah. You've got to be offered the gigs in order to play them. It's not like you can you can. I mean, you can do some self promotion and set up your own gigs, but if you don't have any understanding of the uh, the environment that you're playing in or the region that you're playing, you can often fall flat. And uh, yeah, yeah. So how how does that work for you guys? Do you do you have you got an agent that works on your behalf that looks at placing you in well, venues? No, we've actually. Um, I mean, we all kind of. We've all kind of been self-managed. Our, our drummer does a lot of the work, Jarrett, one of the original members, um, for a long time organising the tours and stuff. Uh, we've each kind of got individual roles at the moment. Um, you know, Sire, our keyboardist, looks after our website and social media. Um, Dylan, our bass player, who actually runs a uh, an agency up in the Whit Sundays for kind of weddings and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. He's looking after a lot of the, kind of the upcoming bookings now. Um you know, and we we kind of take it in in turns to look after different things, and we've kind of got along that way. You know, we're 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 you know we are we are on the search for the right kind of manager and someone to help us with that stuff. But so far, we've been managing it ourselves, and 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 how we've done it is, you know, we 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 kind of did the hard yards back in the day in a certain area up in Queensland. Um, you know, from about Port Douglas down to the kind of Brisbane area, we we travelled a lot. Um, playing shows around there, and we've kind of developed yep. quite a, a relatively strong fan base in that area. You know, so we can always kind of now Step we can kind of call on that mm. and keep keep it going. You know, we kind of maintain that with our tours, and we base our tours around that. And we then we just kind of expand. Like um, our last tour, we kind of pushed into Sydney a bit more, and it was you know obviously more of a risk because we're not very well as well known down there. But you know the, the shows went really well, and now we'll come back and push down to Melbourne where where I'm living now, and. Um, you know, we just kind of grad- gradually build it like that. You, you know, if I think you can take those risks, um, you know, it's it's small in small small bites if that makes exactly. sense. You know, if yeah. you've got the kind of solid tour that you know is going to be financially comfortable, um, and then you, could, you you can do that and then just build on it a little bit, take a few risks at, at this part of the tour and this, you know, and gradually then you're building that kind of uh, uh, that circuit. You know, we can constantly keep calling upon it. Hmm. I think, I, I think yeah. it takes three or four times for you to play at a venue before people actually understand what you're trying to do. That's certainly yeah. been my experience. And <laughs> it, right. it, it does take that length of time. And, of course, how often do you hit the same venue? It's usually, you know, three or four times in a five-year period. So it, it is – you've That's got to be right, very yeah. patient with it, haven't you? And I think it's a, it's anybody looking for fame and fortune and favour in this game is in the wrong game, frankly. It's uh, it's a long, hard slog, so you better be in it for the music. Otherwise, yeah. don't be doing it. And and I guess I'll, I'll finish on this point here. So these two wonderful singles, have you got an album coming out? Is there an album that these we do, two are yeah. part of? Cool. What's that called? The album is the Time is time Has Come. Sun Salute, Time Has Come. I'm not sure if we've announced it yet, but uh, I think we have. If not... There it is, I guess. <laughs> but we've uh, coming out, um, yeah, towards the end of the year, I think, is the release that we're going to do an album tour um, in December. Yeah, we're looking at December. We're going to do uh, most of Queensland, uh, down to Sydney and Melbourne as well. Um, so we're really looking forward to that. Cool, mate. All right. Um, yeah, the album uh, was recorded uh, it, with uh, Nicky, Nicky Bomber Studio in Harrietville, in Victoria. Um, and then we had it... Um, Mixed and mastered by Paulie B on the on the Sunshine Coast, um, and it's yeah, we're really really looking forward to to getting it out there. I bet, I bet, yeah. So we, when the decision to record down in Victoria was that because it sounds like the other guys are up here or, or around Queensland. Was well, that? It's, well, it's funny. It, sorry, carry on. No, you're right. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, was, yeah. Well, the boys themselves. I mean, um, they originally met in Victoria. Uh, they're all keen snowboarders. Um, the 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 original two and the current bass player and our percussionist um, were all friends before the band started in uh, Falls Creek, on Falls Creek Mountain in, in Victoria. So, mm. um, you know, we we, they end, we then kind of formed the band up in Ellie Beach after that, but they were friends from there. So they, um, and we, we were chatting to Nicky Bomber at, I think it was Townsville Cultural Festival, and um, the idea of doing it at his studio, you know, it just seemed like a really good idea for the guys to kind of bring yeah. the music back to where, where they're kind of, you know, friendships had, had come from. So, yeah, that's the kind of reason we went down there. It was great. We had such a good time. We really did it. Such a cool studio. We're really, we were really glad we, we went there. So, Fantastic. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, for people listening who want to get in touch with you, they want to find you on socials, how can they do that? Um, SunSaluteMusic.com um, and you'll find us on Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube channel, 
Um, it's all there. If you if you get on our website, you can find links to all that stuff. Sunsleepmusic.com. Um, yeah, that's the best. That's that's how you find us. You got it all going on, man. I mean, these two tracks. I'm, I'm, I'm quite sincere when I say this. They're very impressive. As I said, I've Thanks got very much. the two kids, mate, the two daughters that I've got. I can only put on certain types of music around them, otherwise they tell me yeah. to turn it off. And they've let me put on these two songs, let me tell you. And that's a really, really good litmus test for me as far as Fantastic. an artist's that's music. The future generation. Oh, it is. I think this, I, I've spoken to Al Anderson. You know, of course, he was the guitarist in uh, Bob Marley's band and Peter Tosh. And he actually, yeah. pl- I don't know whether he, I, I didn't. I couldn't quite discern whether he wrote No Woman, No Cry or whether he just played the guitar line that we've all played a million times, you know, being yeah. a guitarist. God knows how many times I've done that that opening riff. But um, yeah, they're really important artists to have around your kids, I believe. You know, John Coltrane, the great jet, the jazz greats, blues artists. Because the kids, Absolutely. I just notice, you know, with your music, with the artists that I've just mentioned, they calm down. It does something to you. It's a cerebral thing. It does something to your spirit as well. And it's so important, your sort of music, that you guys, you, you found each other, you've got a great friendship, and it's working because it is music that will make a positive effect on society, I believe. Brilliant. Yeah, thanks. That's very kind of you to say, man. But, yeah. Yeah, and, no worries um, at all. That's, that's really, really nice what you said about, about your kids as well. The, uh, the band's kind of... Um, it, we've, we've always had kids around us when we um, have been have been touring. Two of the members um, are, are both father, fathers to two kids each. Um mm. You know, lovely little kids, and they, you know, the wives and the kids come along to the festivals, and they're very much a, a part of the kind of development of the band and the Sunsleep family, as we call it. So, yeah, it's 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 great that you know, you said your children children can enjoy it as well. You know, it's um, it's a good yeah. test. It's a wonderful test. Yeah. I think that one right there. I, I look, I love a lot of death metal, black metal, and the like. And my 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 yeah. eldest, who's six, loves drumming. So I, I spoke to Lee Harrison from Monstrosity and Terrorizer the other night. Now, I mean, he, he played a, a junior kit on a YouTube video where they're playing uh, Breaking the Law by Judas Priest, that sort of thing. But she can't quite get into it it's because it's heavy metal, right? And it's my music. <laughs> but but when it yeah. comes to a lot of other genres, your music and the rest of it, I, I can hear her. I can see her just calm down. And whether she's thinking about it or not, who knows? But she sits down and she starts drawing. That's when I know it's getting to Yeah, her. brilliant. You know, inspiring it, creativity. We love, we love that. Inspiring creativity. Very well put, my friend. That's so true. Yeah. That's what it needs to do. Music like yours does inspire creativity. So long may you continue to do what you do. And thanks so much for the conversation. Thanks so much. You've been listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast series that syndicates for the A List Online. My name's Andrew Mackay Smith, and that interview subject was Chris Buroff from the outfit Sun Salute. Thanks so much for listening.